What's up guys, it's Evan Texaurus and welcome to the final video. I promise it's the final video of Big Red. Um, it's definitely been a, an emotional roller coaster from the beginning. A lot of incompatibilities, parts dying on me. If you guys saw the last few episodes, then you know how much trouble I went into building this damn thing. But alas, it is up and working. I promised you guys I was gonna work on this, fix it, and then bring you guys benchmarks because that's what you asked for in the comment section. So that is what this video is about. It's basically going over the gaming benchmarks, temperatures, and of course the overclocking. And my final thoughts on building inside this case and any other issues that I ran into in terms of cooling and overclocking. First thing I do want to mention is if I were to build in a bigger case, I would have definitely used a different motherboard because the MSI X299 uh, micro ATX board isn't that great when it comes to overclocking, especially since I'm putting in an 18 core 36 threaded CPU and I'm going to be overclocking that. The reason why I say that is uh, the VRMs. The EK currently does not make a monoblock for this specific motherboard. I would have loved to keep the VRMs cooler, which would have helped overclocking and keep the temps down. But unfortunately, they are I think like 90 degrees Fahrenheit right now. It's, it's pretty hot up there and there's nothing I can do in terms of cooling. Another thing I want to mention is the amount of power being supplied for the CPU socket on this motherboard just isn't enough, especially for an 18 core beast. Uh, it only has an, a single 8 pin connector on there and I would have loved to see an extra 4 pin for a more stable overclock. I think I would have uh, been able to push the CPU a little bit more if I had that extra juice, but unfortunately only, it's only got a single 8 pin. So with that said, I was able to push the 7980XC to a stable 4.5 gigahertz on 1.2 volts, which actually I think is very impressive considering that I don't have any cooling for the VRMs, I don't have a monoblock, and also I'm using a single eight pin uh, connector to power the CPU socket. So yeah, but with that said, let's go and check out some temps. I'm gonna give you guys some gaming benchmarks and wrap up the video, let's do this. All right, guys, so before we jump into the gaming benchmarks, let's take a quick look at the temps. Uh, the PC has been running 15, 20 minutes, I would say, at this point, and the CPU is idling around, looks like 35 degrees. It is fluctuating a little bit above 40, but for the most part, you guys can see um, most, actually all the cores are hovering between 34, 35 degrees, so not bad for an overclocked CPU. Uh, and no monoblock. Let me remind you guys that the VRMs get really, really hot on this X299 chipset, so uh, it's definitely affecting thermals. Scrolling down, let's take a look at the GPU. We are at a constant 33 degrees. It's fluctuating between 32, 34, so not bad, you know, since it's not doing anything, so. Yeah, I'm gonna do a quick benchmark. Cinebench R15, take a look at the CPU score. Turn this on. Wow, it is rendering insanely fast. 4,300, oh my God. I've never seen this test finish this quickly before. Uh, interestingly enough, the temps did skyrocket to, um, well, if you're looking at the package, it's around 85 degrees peak, which is pretty hot, I'm not gonna lie, for a water cool build. But if you cram so much powerful components inside in such a tiny case, and they're all producing heat at the same time, I mean, it's, you know, it's gonna affect, obviously, CPU temperatures. Because hot air does rise and, you know, it's not the best airflow case by far. Everything is just pretty much there. And I'm only using six fans. So yeah, 85 degrees is pretty hot, but you know, it's stable. Also, a quick adjustment, guys. Um, I did say it was overclocked on 1.2 volts, which is not true. It's actually 1.185. So I was able to uh, underclock the voltage a little bit more. Uh, but it is stable, and that's what matters. But anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in to some benchmarks, show you guys how this beast is performing in that. So let's open up GTA 5 first. All right, so first game is GTA 5. Let me show you guys the settings that I'm using for this. Everything is pretty much maxed out for the graphics. Uh, it is in 4K resolution, of course. We got DirectX 11. Uh, I did turn off FXAA and MSAA, but everything else looks like it's on very high. Reflection MSAA is off. And I think, what else did I? No, everything else is high, or very high, I should say. So uh, 4K resolution, we are getting, let's see. 
Average 160. I would say 160, yeah. Anywhere between 150 to 160. Very smooth gameplay, as you guys can see. Um, not bad for... Not bad on 4K resolution. I dip down to 147. Let me see if we can go somewhere else with more action. No, Dr. Feedlander, I don't want you. So I noticed the dip down to, well, 133, but you're well over 100 FPS. Two 1080 Ti's, which by the way, are overclocked. I think I did 50 megahertz on the core for both of the GPUs and 500 megahertz additional on the memory clock. Yeah, very, very smooth gameplay. Uh, also guys, keep in mind that GeForce Experience is recording my gameplay. And there's usually, I think around one or two FPS uh, drop when I'm recording, which isn't a big deal. And the temperature wise, both GPUs are actually fairly cool. 57 degrees for the top and 53 degrees for the bottom. CPU is hovering between 60, 65 degrees, so not bad at all. Uh, if those two GPUs were air cooled, I can guarantee you guys that they would be in the high 70s, probably even the 80s. So, yeah, very impressive. Alright, so I started up PUBG, this is 4K resolution, and already I noticed that one of the GPUs isn't working at 100%. And I'm guessing because of the poor optimization for SLI support, or maybe there isn't any support for SLI on PUBG for some reason, because only one of the GPUs is working. Interesting, okay. Um, Alright, let me just actually get out of this plane first. So um, FPS wise, yeah, you're definitely going to be dipping below 60 FPS. Um, then again, this is 4K resolution maxed out in ultra settings. This game isn't 100% optimized. Uh, yeah, everything's ultra settings looks like. V-Sync is off. You are not going to be passing 60 FPS, that's for sure. I might have to lower the settings uh, resolution to 2560 by 1440p. So yeah, let me do that real quickly. There we go, 120, wow, jumped up pretty much double. So we're in the low hundreds. 106, 108, 110 FPS. This is actually playable. I don't think 4K, 4K is definitely not as smooth as uh, 2K, that's for sure. So yeah, depending on the area, you're getting anywhere from, I would say, 80 to 120 FPS. So, um, well above the 60 mark, which is definitely playable in 2K resolution. There's no stutter, there's no lag. CPUs hovering around 60 degrees um, Celsius, and then GPUs are both around 50 degrees, so not bad. I mean, if both GPUs can be utilized, I'm pretty confident that even in 4K resolution, we can achieve over 100 FPS, but unfortunately only one GPU is working. Oh, actually, I suck at this game, so I'm just gonna quit before somebody shoots me anyways. So let's move on to another game. Doom is up next. We have uh, ultra settings under OpenGL, as you guys can see. Ultra settings pretty much maxed out. Let's take a look at the FPS. We are hovering well over 100, 150, 152. I just noticed a little bit of stutter actually. It's interesting. Uh, but good news is both GPUs are being recognized. 2000 megahertz on the top GPU. It's stuttering though. I'm not sure why. It kind of just comes and goes. There we go. It's happening again. That is interesting. I don't know why it's stuttering on Doom when it wasn't stuttering on other games. Maybe something with the... Uh... Let's try Vulcan actually. Maybe... Maybe it won't stutter on Vulcan. Let me switch real quick. Alright, so the stutter apparently came from the API. OpenGL, it's for some reason stutters. And on Vulcan, which is what I'm playing on right now, it's buttery smooth. Uh, the frames aren't as high compared to OpenGL, but I mean, it's not stuttering, which I would take over the additional, what, 10 FPS. I am getting around 100. It is dipping down to mid 90s, I think maybe even low 90s, but it's still playable in 4K resolution ultra settings. So yeah, very smooth. 
That's just bizarre why I was stuttering on OpenGL, that's interesting. But yeah, that seemed to fix the issue. All I, all I had to do was switch to Vulcan. Uh, yeah, okay, moving on to the next game. Fortnite is up next, a very popular game. Um, it's definitely one of my favorites, although I suck really bad at it. Uh, we are getting, this is 4K by the way, maxed out ultra settings. We're getting slightly over 60 FPS, it looks like. No, we're dipping below 60 FPS, actually. So, and, oh, it looks like it's not even supporting SLI because one of the GPUs is not even working. So, yeah, another game that's not really optimized. And I think I'm gonna die here, yep. I don't have a gun. I can't even hear anything. I'm not playing with any sound, by the way, so... Anybody can... Oh, yep, there's somebody in this room. <laughs> We're gonna die here. <laughs> yes, what's... I don't even know what's happening. Oh my god. We got so lucky there. Oh, Jesus. What were you doing here, dude? Wow. Alright, let's try this again. Um, so yeah, we're not getting well over 60 FPS in 4K. I mean, still very smooth gameplay, but I want to get at least in the hundreds. So I think I'm going to have to lower the resolution to 2560. So yeah, 2560 by 1440. Let's try this. We are at 143 in the sky. And my friends ditched me. I'm solo right now. Oh wait, no, I'm not. I lied. Uh, looks like we're going to Tomato Town. Alright, uh, looks like we're going to Tomato Town. We are at 151 FPS. Looks like 2K is a sweet spot. Most games aren't even supporting SLI anyway, so what's the point of having two GPUs? The reason why I have two GPUs is because this is tech source. I mean, I, I do ridiculous builds, but you guys already know that. Lowest I've seen a dip so far was 107 FPS. So, oh wait, no, 101, 97. 97 was the lowest, which actually is really good still. But mostly it's in the high 30, 130s, looks like. 65 degrees for the CPU and 54, or no, 60 degrees on the GPU. So, fairly cool temps. And I don't know if you guys can hear the PC, but it's actually very quiet. So... Uh, that's one definitely one of the benefits of going water cooled. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I went over the most popular games. Um, if there's a specific game you guys wanted to see, I'm sorry if I couldn't get to it. But long story short, it'll pretty much max out any game. If there's any support for SLI, you can play in 4K resolution easily. Otherwise, I think 2K is the sweet spot if you want a game over 100 fps but anyways i think it pretty much wraps up this video i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much again for every single one of you who have been supporting the series ever since episode one i know it's been a long journey anyways yeah you can find all the parts listed down below in the description section if you guys want to check it out i love your faces and i will see you in the next one